Are you ready for your headliner tonight, guys? He headlined the Naughty Show at the Las Vegas Comedy Festival. His voice has been in over, over 650 video games, the smoothest voice in comedy. From right here in Indianapolis, Artie Widgery. Yeah, baby. Give it up for Logan. Logan, my man, Logan. Yeah, baby. Logan, best ass in show business. Yeah, baby. Best ass in show business. My first impression, a Cabbage Patch doll. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. I do over 3,000 impressions. People look at me and go, how can you do so many? Very simple, I have a total disregard for quality. Ha! <laughs> Everyone pick up your cocktails and drink with me. Will you do that, please? Yes. Pick, up your pick up your goddamn drinks, everybody. Here we go. <laughs> On the count of three, suck them back. One, two, three. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ah. What's up about drinking? Whiskey. 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 Yeah. Whiskey. What are you drinking, ma'am? What? Gin and tonic. Good. Beer. Beer. What's that fluffy thing you had there? <laughs> what? Oh, I wish chocolate? Pussy drink. <laughs> <laughs> pussy, 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 pussy. <laughs> I got a man's drink. Wild turkey. Yeah, baby. Yeah. This shit will put hair in your nuts. You don't have to worry about that, ma'am. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> just, just making sure. Check it out, though. They give me this manly drink with a manly straw. <laughs> I've been drinking wild turkey a long time. Long, long time. Well, since noon. And... Uh, <laughs> Actually, 35 years, this has been my cocktail of choice. And I've learned something over that time. I have learned that if you drink enough of that crap, you will do some weird shit. <laughs> I can prove it. It was about a week ago, I was with some friends, and we took, my, myself and a friend polished off a half bottle of wild turkey. And I learned a valuable lesson. I learned that when you shave your scrotum, <laughs> it will look like chicken skin. Now, now, men, let me just talk to the men. And you. <laughs> when you shave your scrotum, and you will, <laughs> don't put aftershave on it when you're done. That is a... I, <laughs> I was doing James Brown all the way to the bathtub. It's like, Papa needs a brand new bag! <laughs> I uh, just got back from a tour through Kentucky, did Lexington, then stopped in through Louisville, and learned a valuable lesson in Louisville, boy. You shouldn't do anything to be stopped by a Kentucky State police officer because they're doing weird shit. If they stop you, they think outside the box. No, they will not give you a ticket. No, no, they will give you a whooping. <laughs> get out the car, boy, go on, get out the car. Get out the goddamn car! Now drop your britches. Yeah, pull them britches down, boy. I'm going to whoop your ass. Bend over. Bend over. Move that hand. You shaved your scrotum, didn't you, boy? Yeah. God damn. Looks like a bucket of chicken. Why did you do that? It's... Pull your pants up. I'm getting hungry. <clears throat> Get me some scrotum chitlins. Mm, boy. And what is a trip to Kentucky without visiting a Waffle House? I'm serious. They got more, they got to actually, they actually have a comedy Waffle House tour. <laughs> Point is, I, we're, I'm with six comics. We're drunker than shit at 3.30 in the morning. And we're piling into this Waffle House in Louisville. 
And, and, and we're all getting breakfast, because that's what you do when you're drunk at 3.30 in the morning and you're in a Waffle House. It's, it's, it's like mandatory. So I order eggs, tons of eggs, sausage, uh, taters, uh, scattered, smothered, covered, and chunked, uh, grits, because <clears throat> it come with it. <clears throat> I got the toast and the coffee. The wait just looked at me. She asked me the weirdest question I have ever been asked at, West, at breakfast time. She looks at me and goes, you want your yellers busted? <laughs> Do you want your titties blown off? <laughs> <laughs> she had three titties. <laughs> it was a Waffle House waitress. Huh? Before I started doing comedy, I had the worst job in the world. How many of you, by applause, have had or presently have a really awful fucking job? Which, what horrible job did you have? Testes. Did you clap? Didn't you clap? Yeah, you? What, what was your horrible job? I worked at Skyzone. I love that place. I can see why you'd hate it. <laughs> Little bitty kids, snot no kids, bossing an adult around. Hey, I didn't get my last jump. <laughs> yeah, that sucks. My job was worse. Before I started doing comedy, you don't know this about me. I was a, I was a septic tank pumper. A honey dipper. I'm, I'm in Camby, Indiana. This was the worst day ever, but the most hilarious fucking thing in the world. I'm in Camby, Indiana at some guy's house. He's standing next to me as I get down to the top of the tank. I remove the top of the septic tank after getting all the dirt away, and we are both standing next to each other looking into the septic tank. And we're looking at all of it, and it's all of a sudden, out of the clear blue, floating by very calmly, a turd about the size of my forearm. <laughs> slowly floating by. A homeowner, without missing a beat, looks at it and goes, huh, didn't think I'd ever see that again. <laughs> that was roast beef night, you know? Grandma, she makes the best roast beef ever. Oh. You know, I could drink this quicker if I didn't have the pussy straw. Here's to you. Okay, okay, I'm a pussy. God, that was... I thought I could do it, I swear to God. I... <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just drinking a lot less nowadays. I... Smoking a lot of dope, though. Yeah, well, well it, it's, it's for glaucoma. I don't have it, my mom does. But... <laughs> she won't smoke the shit. So I smoke it for her. And then I tell her what I see, and that works out great for both of us. <laughs> Do, do, I don't want to embarrass anyone, but do you remember when we used to be kids and we'd be smoking dope and we'd be hiding from our parents? And now all of a sudden, we're parents smoking dope hiding from the kids. <laughs> <laughs> they knock on the bedroom door and scares the piss out of you. It's like, what are you doing in there? <laughs> fucking. <laughs> we're, we're fucking. Get away from the door. We're fucking. We're fucking. There you go, bitch. Act like you're fucking. <laughs> this is my. We. I have things in my bag. I want to show you, but look at my bag. <laughs> it's shaved. <laughs> you know, I bought this back when the Colts moved to town back in 1984. And you know, I really think we ought to change their name from the Colts to the 69ers, because they suck at both ends of the field. And, um,
It's just not a penis enlarger. <laughs> if it was, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> <coughs> not that I need it. I, uh, I have a big dick. It's party size. <laughs> That sounded like Barry White when I did that, didn't I? I got a party size dick, baby. Mmm, how deep is your love, baby? Oh, drop your jaws, baby. Oh, yeah, party size dick, baby. Oh. I'm getting a boner. <laughs> the wrinkles out of it, might as well wash it. <laughs> You're looking at me going, what the hell is that? Can we pet it? <laughs> Here we go one more time with this thing and I'll tell you what it is. Here we go. Test tube baby. <laughs> there go the Baptists. You're a sinner, scum. You're going to hell, bastard. <laughs> Flipper masturbating. <laughs> Had to be there. <laughs> You good? Is this, is this everything you expected? It is? <laughs> wow, I didn't know what to expect. I swear to God. You know, this really sucks now. <laughs> Maybe it was the Nicorette gum I was eating earlier. I just stopped smoking six, six months ago. Um, thank you. Thank you. Um, I know a lot of people here probably quit long ago than me, but for me, that's a big thing, because I smoked for like 45 years. And yeah, and I had, the, I had the chest scan and all that, the CT scan, and they said no cancer, no growths, no nothing. So I felt like I hit the lottery. So I had to, had to stop smoking, and I will not go back, because literally, I felt like I won the lottery. But every morning now, it's, I, I wake up and I cough a little bit and cough up what appears to be a chicken embryo. <clears throat> Breakfast! But it's like, I don't care because I'm not smoking. So, happy day. Happy day. Uh, I had nothing, I had no joke about that, but it's just something that happened to me. Um, one of the jobs that I had many, many years ago, and I can't believe it's still sitting here. I, I shared this with someone last night. I used to work for Planned Parenthood for a little while, just a very short period of time, back in the 80s and early 90s. And back then, I, I was working for them talking to young people about safe sex and, and condoms and protection Things of that nature. So one of the things that we used was a little pamphlet called How to Use a Condom. And for the people from Kentucky, at the bottom it says, Rubber. <laughs> How to Use a Rubber by Seymour Dick. <clears throat> <laughs> what this is, it's, a, it's an instruction booklet on how to use a condom. And to be perfectly honest with you, as adults, if you don't know how to use a condom, you do not have the right to ever have sex as long as you live. <laughs> Period. But I want to go through this with you because it's actually quite amusing. I need a male volunteer down front. How about you? You want to play? <laughs> He's, okay. Sure. I don't need a model. Here, follow along. What's your name, sir? Dan, all right, just follow along with me to validate that what I'm reading here is absolutely true, 100% factual, I'm not making this shit up. Open it up to the first page, and your girlfriend's looking at it going, that's a penis? <laughs> you bastard! <laughs> follow along with me, here we go. This is step number one on how to use a condom. Hold the tip of the condom to squeeze out the air. This leaves some room for the <coughs> semen when it is ejaculated. Put the condom on the end of the penis. <laughs> 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 
go, okay, boss. <laughs> which way did he go? Which way did he go? <laughs> Step number two, keep holding the tip of the condom. Unroll it onto the erect penis all the way down to the hair. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> Shave that puppy. Step number three. Uh, actually, it's step number four. Put the condom. <laughs> Wait a minute. Put them on. You're going to love this. Put the condom on before the penis enters the partner. <laughs> before. If you could do it any other way, you'd be spelunking. Let me out of here. Hello? I lost my condom. Hello? Hey, lady. Step number five. This is my favorite one. You can use a lubricant like KY foreplay or contraceptive gel. Lubricants like Vaseline or grease should not be used. Hey, honey, bring me a bucket of that black shit out of the garage, would you? <laughs> I'll lube the chassis on the truck with it. Bring it on in here, goddammit. Yeah, and bring me a bear on your way through the kitchen. I love you. <laughs> Step number six. I have to fess, fess up to something. Have you already read ahead? It's number six. All right, number six. I, I didn't understand this the first time I read it. And it was very hard to convey what it means to kids, teenagers, unless you understood what it was. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to assume that your people are as dumb as I am. So what I will do is I will read it to you one time. If you get it, gently raise your paw. The rim of the condom should be held and the penis withdrawn while it is still hard. Let me help you out. If you are withdrawing your penis and it's still hard, you ain't done. <laughs> and where do you think you're going? Uh-uh, Mr. Party Size. You got more fucking to do. Number seven. <laughs> Gentlemen, let me talk to just the men. Men, if you need this instruction to use a condom, you don't have the right to have a penis. <laughs> For the best protection, use a new condom every time you have sex. Hey, here's one from Sunday, honey. Let me get that one in. Oh, there's the one from last weekend. I'll use it. Let's move to the back of the pamphlet. Let, see this on the back here where it says different guidelines for sex? There are, I don't know if you knew this or not, but we talk about safe sex, safe sex, safe sex. Well, that's, there's no such thing as safe sex. It's actually technically called safer sex. There is safer sex, there is probably safe sex, there is unsafe sex. Those are the three distinct sex categories. And the scariest one of these three categories to me is obviously Probably safe. Is it safe? Probably. <laughs> Can we do it anyway? <laughs> Please. Under safer sex, there are five things they consider to be safer sex. Number one, top of the list. Dry kissing. I feel better. <laughs> Safer sex number two. Masturbation. Couldn't read it, it was a really big word. <laughs> number three, body to body rubbing. Or what we called in high school what? Dry humping, there you go, that's it. Hey baby, let's dry hump. Is it safe? Probably. 
Just take your studded jeans off. I got a rash last time. <laughs> What's the last one say, Dan? I can't read it without my glasses. Oh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, I got it. Okay, this is, this is the last one. You're looking at it going, that's bullshit. <laughs> Safer sex. Here we go. Shared erotic fantasy. Come on, think it with me. Ah. See, bullshit. <laughs> I just came in my pants. Now, probably safe sex. There are five things here that are probably safe. Yes, they probably are. Or as we say in Indiana, probably. <laughs> or probably. <laughs> uh, and, but there are two things on this list that if you do them, you will probably feel like an idiot. <clears throat> probably safe sex number one, vaginal sex with a condom, of course. Number two, anal sex with a condom. Goddamn right. That'd be my reaction. I don't know about you. I... There are many faces of anal sex. Am I shitting on you? Probably safe sex number three. <laughs> Let me pay you now? No, that's not, a, I don't think that's on the list. <laughs> Let me pay you now. <laughs> oh, you know, this is, this one, this next one is, is, is really amazing. Yes, it is probably safe. Yes, it probably is. But if you were to do it, you will probably look like an idiot. <laughs> probably safe sex number three, mutual masturbation, safer with rubber gloves. <laughs> Come on, darling, we got to try this shit. <laughs> we, no. No. You like it? <laughs> <laughs> Here, do me. <laughs> do me, please. <laughs> Here you go, Larry. <laughs> That's your souvenir. <laughs> you can pay me later. <laughs> Probably say sex number four. I don't get it, but okay. Wet kissing. I don't kiss like that. <laughs> I could. <clears throat> and last but not least, put your seatbelts on. You're not going to believe what somebody wants you to do. <sighs> Oral sex with a condom or a dental dam. <laughs> I'm getting a blowjob, not a root canal. Why do I need that? It's... <laughs> hey, you left your teeth in my ass. Hey, lady! <laughs> Unsafe sex. That's the last category. Unsafe sex. This is interesting. Because there's always one person in the audience that goes, I know what it is. <laughs> I done it. <laughs> With a goat. <laughs> <laughs> there are four things here. Here we go. Put your seatbelts on. Unsafe sex is considered to be unprotected vaginal sex, unprotected anal sex, unprotected oral sex. Unsafe sex is the sharing of <clears throat> dildos, vibrators, and other sexual devices. <laughs> <laughs> sharing your dildo. Hi. I just moved in next door. Can I borrow your dildo? That one by the TV will be fine. 
Mine's in a box. Got duct tape on it. The dildo, not the box. <laughs> See, it's a real old dildo. It's a heirloom. Oh, my grandma owned it. I don't know where I'm going with this. I'm sorry. I'm just spewing. Dan, that's your souvenir of tonight's program. That's your program. <laughs> Get your programs. Get your programs. How to use a condom. Happy day. Okay. Going, what else can he possibly pull out of his ass now? Uh, what can he blow through his nose now? <clears throat> I love improvisation, and we're going to do some now because it's the perfect kind of crowd for that. Because you're all, you know, a little juiced up a little bit, and that's good. And, and you look like you got your 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 creative juices flowing. So let's do this. This is a little improvisational game called fill in the blank. It's very simple. It's very easy. Here's how it works. I will tell a story as a character about a subject that we'll all come up with together, okay? Now, as I tell the story, I'll come to pauses here, there, and yon throughout the story, little blanks, if you will. When I get to those blanks, it is your job as the audience to fill in those blanks with words that will finish the sentence. But the catch is, don't give me a word that you think goes there. Give me something that's a little more creative, a little obscure, a little bizarre, a little off the wall. Do you think we can do that? Yeah. Okay, good. Let, let's practice to see if we know what we're doing. And I want you to tell me right now that when you do shout out something and fill in the blank, make sure I can understand you and make sure I can hear you, okay? Here we go. Just practice. This morning I woke up and I went for a jog in the... In the nude. Good. I went for a jog in the nude. I got cold, so I went into a Walmart. A Walmart. <laughs> and, and, there, and there in the Walmart, I found this little hooker. hooker. <laughs> and the hooker gave me a blow job. Blow okay. Um, <laughs> blow job, blow job at, a, at a Walmart. It well, won't be the first time. <clears throat> You know, I think it'll be really good if we had subjects for the story that might, um, let's get three subjects that we can make this story out of, okay? Three subjects, shout them out at random, let's go. Childhood. What? Childhood. Childhood. Oh, great, you are an idiot. <laughs> it's okay. What else? Wagon. Childhood and a wagon and? Football. Football. Childhood, a wagon, and football. Yeah, you ready to play? Peanut butter in my cracker. <laughs> Skippy. <clears throat> my name is Philbert Del Mosset. I'm from a little town not too far from here called um, Evansville. Evansville. <laughs> <laughs> not far at all. Just fucking four hours south. <laughs> I, uh, I got a good job in Evansville. We have one main industry there. We build these big old dildos. <laughs> I'm, I'm holding my arm up like this. They must be big fucking dildos. Silo sized sons of bitches. We don't make them out of normal dildo material. We make ours out of um, brie. Did you say brie? Brie, Brie, che they're cheese dildos. <laughs> Can't get them in your oven, though. You gotta start a bonfire outside. Brie dildos. I work at the Evansville Brie Dildo Company. Love my job there. I got seniority, health and dental. <laughs> I'm in charge of the division where we... Um, Test them, I test them. I'm, a, I'm, the, t I'm the head tester. <laughs> Just my head. I, I like my job as the head tester at the Bree Dildo Company in Evansville, but uh, they fired me a week ago. Uh, I don't blame them, they caught me um, 
<laughs> Masturbating, thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Not every day you get to stand on stage and have women yell at you, Masturbating! <laughs> I was masturbating. I was trying to tell them I was testing them, but they weren't buying it. <laughs> so I got a new job now right here in Indianapolis, the capital city. I work over there on Pendle and Pike at that, um, the Walmart. I work at the Walmart on Pendle and Pike. I work in the um, automotive. I change. What? Wait a minute. Let's hear what the idiot said. Hold on. What? I, I work, bed sores. I work in the bed sore department. Yeah, I go around and flip people all day. And... That feel better? Yeah. Yeah. Fuck it, I got fired from Walmart. I, I, I hated that job. I'm glad they fired me. They fired me because they caught me, um... Sucking. Fucking, that's it, fucking. Thank you, ma'am. You were fucking! <laughs> yeah, it's fucking at Walmart in the bed store department. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> you are all going to hell. <laughs> and you're gonna take me with you, aren't you? <laughs> Shit. So I got a new job down the street at that, um... <laughs> I don't work at no goddamn Waffle House. <laughs> PTs, thank you. Oh, yeah. I work at the teddy bar. <laughs> the teddy bar. <laughs> That's the international symbol for teddy bar. <laughs> you can go anywhere in the world, they'll know what you're talking about. Hey, see who play. <laughs> oh, titty bar, two block left. <laughs> in Evansville, it's more like titty bar. <laughs> I like working at the titty bar. I'm the, um, <laughs> I'm the bouncer. <laughs> Come on in. I, uh, I almost got fired from that job, too. I had a hard time getting to work. My car is all fucked up. I got a piece of shit car. I got one of these, um, <laughs> wait a minute, a what? A Prius. I hurt. I got a turbo Prius. I loaned it to a guy that I work with at the titty bar. He's a pain in the ass. He's one of them, um, he's a Methodist. <laughs> yeah, you loan your car to a Methodist, you're in big trouble. Yeah, he put in my damn turbo Prius one of these big old, um, a dildo. <laughs> It had three-speed dildo. That's more than a car had. <laughs> so my car's in the shop getting de-dildoed. <laughs> and we all know how painful that can be. So I'm hitchhiking everywhere now, and I'm terrified of hitchhiking, especially in Indianapolis. If you hitchhike in this town too much, you stand a damn good chance of getting shot. <laughs> right there in the head. I was hitchhiking yesterday because I was trying to get to the um, basketball. basketball something. <laughs> Boy, I, you're playing along. <laughs> I was hitchhiking trying to get to the, um, the, the zoo. I was hitchhiking to the zoo. Yeah, everybody knows I, I love the zoo. I'm hitchhiking to the zoo because I had to pick up a, um, an orangutan. <laughs> They had a special. <laughs> Two for one, thank you. Uh, well, it wasn't for me, it was for my... Um... My male lover. I don't like where it's going and I'm not gonna go on. I was hitchhiking to get there to the zoo to pick up the orangutan for my lover. <laughs> and uh, it scared the piss out of me when I was hitchhiking because I was picked up by one of these, um, an Uber driver. But it was a scary Uber driver. 
He was dressed as a um, a clown. <laughs> what kind of clown? Uh, a what? It clown. Oh, he's he was hungry. I was hit. I was picked up by an it clown Uber driver, and I I told him I was going to the zoo to pick up an orangutan, two for one for my lover. And uh, I asked him where he was going. He said he's going hunting. And I said, where the hell does an Uber clown hunt? He said he had to go all the way down to um, Greentown. Greentown, because he was hunting these beaver. beaver. <laughs> yeah, them good old Greentown beaver. Yeah, that, you can spot a green. A gre you can spot a green town beaver a mile away. They're the kind with the um, hair. hair. <laughs> so I went hunting with him, and we was hunting these uh, hairy beaver, hairy green town beaver. And you can't just go out and shoot a hairy green town beaver. That's against state law. DNR will fucking fine you. You gotta whack them, whack them. You, got, you do, you got to whack them with a... A beaver whacker. That's ingenious as hell. We beaver whacked beaver all day long, boy. Every time I bring home a fresh truckload of beaver whacked beaver, my wife gets creative in the kitchen. She whips up some... Um, Beaver taters, good. It's, it's like shepherd's pie, only with beaver. I got sick as hell, ate way too much of it, got a bad case of... Um, Flip throat. Hair balls, thank you very much. <coughs> <coughs> Went to the doctor, he told me the only way to get rid of them beaver hair balls was to drink a lot of... Um, Wild turkey, God love you, sir. It's about fucking time. Anyway, I'm feeling better now, and I, I feel like after all the shit we talked about, we have to have a moral to this story. I have no fucking idea what it is. But I think if we put our heads together, we'd figure out that the moral of the story should be that it's a hell of a lot better to have a... A what? A skin beaver in your hand than having a, a hairy beaver in your bush. <laughs> Thank you. As many of you know, I am a purveyor of fine children's literature. And I would like to share with you tonight something that I found today from one of the best children's publications known to mankind, Highlights for Children. Tonight's poem is titled, Pussy Gets a Bath. <laughs> Be mature. Pussy Gets a Bath. By the literary giant, Muffin Patch Brown. Long time ago, in the town of Ishkabibble, lived a lovely little girl by the simple name of Sybil. Sybil had a pussy striped with white and gray. Pussy runs, pussy jumps, and lifts her rear to spray. <laughs> Sybil pets her pussy everywhere they roam. Pussy didn't have her shots, and on her mouth is foam. <laughs> the pussy bit poor Sybil. That really wasn't fair. Then Sybil cocked her foot and kicked it through the air. Higher and higher to the sky, that pussy really flew. Ever seen a pussy's face when it finally hits Mach 2? <laughs> <laughs> Flying pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Two flying pussies. Angry flying pussy. Pussy landed in some garbage. It shakes its head and blinks. It was found by a little black boy that said, man, this pussy stinks. <laughs> 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 
The little boy bathed the pussy from its head to its belly. Even after washing with bleach, the pussy was still very smelly. <laughs> Suddenly, the pussy escaped and quickly ran out of the house. It climbed a tree and ate some birds and choked on the pecker of a titmouse. <laughs> the moral to this story, folks, is not at all what you would think. Instead of washing your cat with bleach, simply let that pussy stink. I gotta go, this has been the most fun I have had today. My name is Artie Widgery and I certainly hope I get to see every one of you again. Thank you for coming out to play with me. Good night everybody, thank you. <laughs>